Hi everyone, my name is Maxim Sitch and I run my own AI automation agency Flowby.ai. Last week I was watching OpenAI Dev Days and got inspired by a unique case of ChatGDP tools or action calling or functions, you name it. During the Dev Days there was a community spotlight which was completely overshadowed by all the other headliners and announcements throughout these days. So I watched it and I found a very interesting gem to show. There was a company named GenMap which is an international biotech company and they showed their LLM deployment in patient story creation. One remark, patient story is a very time-consuming and specific process that requires knowledgeable workers investing tons of hours and reviewing dozens of databases and documents to craft the patient story. One patient story can take hours for a skillful employee, but now literally take minutes with AI. Think about hundreds of patients, different geographies and more. This is a crazy huge time saver. Let's see a shortcut from their demo. So here is the video from the OpenAI Dev Day Community Spotlight and I will leave the link down in the description below so you can watch it. And as you can see, it got only 587 views from the channel, from the official channel of OpenAI, which has 1,380,000 subscribers, which is a clear signal that the video like remained almost unnoticed in the channel. But it has a very specific and nice use case that I really wanted to show. So here you can see that uh, a worker, basically a doctor or a nurse is actually writing a patient story. So on day one, the subject received the first dose of investigational drug a 800 milligrams etc etc and as you can see all the green blue and red ones those are pulled in from different databases and the whole story of the patient cure is actually written down in one document literally before people used to write it by hand and now it's available on the computer and in many many cases in just believe me in so many institutions it is actually done manually by people but now and today you can actually automate the whole thing because what you would literally need to do you would need to pull the data from the different databases and the documents and the story and all that pull this in together and write the clear and concise the patient story so that the doctor whenever it reads it it kind of grabs the idea and by the way here you have to pretty specifically and carefully follow the rules the times has to be specific the dosage has to be specific the days has to be very specific so you don't want to mess up with this one okay so this is basically how the end process looks and let me actually show you how they are making it let me explain how that works so here as it goes is a general prompt and the system prompts that comes to the to their AI system so and what is more important these are the tasks they're prompting explicitly their chat GPT agent to complete the task in a specific steps one by one in a specific order and the order here is very important we start from the first and we finish with the 17th why is that important because the information it actually retrieves from the previous steps it is used from for the next steps and here as we can see from the first to the nine is basically retrieving different information from different databases from 10 to 14 15 and 16 is basically crafting a patient story once we have all the information and i'm pretty sure majority of you guys already know how to do from 10 to 15 how to prompt it correctly so that it writes in the way you want it to write and i have another video somewhere here about how to adjust your writing style to your specific style but from the first to nine actually i'll show you today how we can retrieve the information from the different databases how we can update data Databases or post information to databases. Those nine steps here compile all the information together and provides the ChatGPT with essential information to actually write very careful patient story. Right, and once we have these steps, let's actually see how that technically works. So they're completing each and every step. And as we can see here, for example, task one, retrieve the study identifier and it has been completed for 0.5 seconds and they move to the next task and then it go to the next task to the third fourth fifth and so on and so on so essentially at the end of the day we actually see how many tasks are completed if they're completed and how much time did it take to complete the task this way at the end of the day what they receive is basically a ready document with a patient story let's actually see so we've got a clinical course on day one day a day 43 etc etc so the full clinical story patient story of that patient okay all right so you know how to do the steps from 10 to 16 let me show you how to make the steps from 1 to 9 so essentially what happens there is they're making api calls to retrieve the information from different databases and if you have an sql database you will need an ai agent to write a specific query to sql database to retrieve the exact information you need instead of sql database i will be using google sheets database with different products like for the e-commerce shop 
And this is actually how it looks. Nothing too difficult, pretty, pretty easy database. So it's just for the sake of example, we're going to be using this simple, uh, simple database here. All right. And how do we create such engine? Basically, this is a simple chat GPT with actions that will be able to pull in the data with the function calling. So for this particular purpose, I will create a custom GPT. So I'll go to my GPTs, create, and I'll name it AI database assistant. Okay. AI database assistant helps to retrieve information info from database okay so next we need to provide it with instruction in my case i have the instructions pre-written so i'll show it here so i give it a role so virtual assistant and give it a constant so it will be doing two things it will be retrieving detailed product information and the second thing will be adding new products and also updating information which i'll show a little bit later actually let me write it down updating information about the products the system will use webhooks to communicate with the database API. So we've got the first task, retrieve product information. I'll tell it exactly how it needs to retrieve the information. Then the second task is adding a new product. Then we get specifics in my database. What are the different headers I have? Title, category, subcategory. What is the expected response when I when I send a GET request? So essentially GET request will provide me with information from the database and POST request will either update a database I mean, update a certain uh, ID or a product, or it will add a new product to the database. Okay. And here we got the post request, the basically the data fields that are there, the expected response. And there are a couple of examples in case of a successful completion or not. Okay. So this is how it works. I would usually um, click off the DALI because I don't need to create images here, but I'll need code interpreter just in case. So the next important thing is going to cust uh, create new action here. So what is more important here, we have to create action and we don't need any authentication here. We will just need to add schema. You can search through different examples to see how the schema should actually look, but we will be using another example. So here we have two scenarios in our make.com and each scenario is basically needed for each specific webhook. In our case, we'll have two webhooks. One will be used for the post request and the other one will be used for the get request. So this is how the post request looks. It receives a, a webhook from the chat and then it has two rows basically. In the first row, it adds a new product. If there are no product ID in the database, if we're looking to my database, I've got different IDs. If it doesn't find the ID here, it will add the product to the end of the table if the id is already here it actually finds that specific row and updates the value in that specific row okay this is what happens um, when we use the post request and when we use the get request basically what it does here we receive a webhook this guy is actually another ai assistant right so we are calling from chat gpt we'll be calling to make and from make we'll calling we will be calling back to chat gpt to actually formulate a specific query in search query language in google to actually filter the database and receive exactly the data we want and as we can see here basically your google child's query language generator and what you need to generate is the google query and as we can see from the examples here so select where e is equal to socks or for example, recommend me a raincoat system select E where E is equal to raincoat. So E in my case, uh, I have a database here. So E is gonna be this column subcategory. It's basically a selection of different categories. So what this AI assistant is going, essentially is going to do, it will write Google Charts query for me. Okay, and once the query is done, I'll pass that query to my Google Charts so that I retrieve exactly the information I need. I will aggregate that information into JSON. And the reason I need aggregation, because I can potentially get more than one bundle, right? So if I select raincoats, there might be 10 or hundreds of raincoats. So I don't want it to be like a different webhook every time every raincoat arrives. I want to aggregate all the raincoats into one file and pass that to our ChatGPT. And essentially it will get back to me with this reply. So in order to write the schema, what we actually need, we need double um, two webhooks here. So the first one is we need to create a webhook. So in order to create a webhook, we need to add your module. We go to webhook and custom webhook. Once we create the webhook, we click here, add, we name it somehow, name somehow. And here we can use the get request headers, but we actually don't need that. We need to copy address to the clipboard and we need to just remember that this is going to be our post request. Here we do the same thing. We add a module with the webhook custom webhook and 
this would be get request we just save it and we get another url address and if you go there if we paste it you see we've got a specific url and this specific url will be used to communicate data through that api okay so got a two web hooks one for post one for get so we take this URLs and we go to our chat GPT and there is like schema expert. And I will also publish the link to this GPT agent in the description below so you can access it. And we are asking it to create a schema for us, but we need to pass those two URLs to it. So I say, um, create a schema for me using the get, get request uh, URL, this post request url this so and then i go back here and i will take this was the get request and this was my post request okay and this was my post request so i need to specify what kind of data i want to pass so for get uh, that will be just the question that a user is going to ask right so if i have any question i will ask it and then my ai assistant that sits right there is going to write a specific query afterwards so i'll need to pass the question so i'll do this in quotation marks for post i might actually do all those responses so let me actually get back here and for the post this is the expected response so let's actually use this get uh then we get the post post expected response so go to post for post we'll use expected response expected response and we'll need to also use the data so here we say for post request data field in request body uh, let's actually add this as well and for get, uh, let's actually use another one for get here. Required data fields in response. Actually, those will not be required. They are already here, but uh, let's actually add them. Okay. All right. So let's actually see how it generates us the proper schema. Okay. And let's wait a couple seconds. Right, so schema has been generated and let's actually test how that works so let's copy paste that here and let's see and we got the get product details and add product details and we can actually test those and if we uh, say test now it's going to ask us to use the http request and we click uh, always allow if we believe that's okay and let's see if that works encountered an issue retrieving the data and that's totally fine because um, basically it called this webhook and here we can see successfully determine the structure we need to build the full kind of scenario so that it gets some sort of data back but here it just didn't get any data back and instead let's test the second one we have the post request let's use the post request Okay, so it successfully added, determined the second structure. So essentially here it received certain data and we will need to actually send this data to the database. Okay, so this is how we actually exchanging information between the different scenarios. And uh, if I'll just show you how the rest of that actually looks. Basically in the get scenario, we have a specific prompt to create the Google Charts language query to actually address the specific database here you will actually see what is the prompting here i'm not going to go in, in too many detail but basically I'll, I'll explain the model how it should prompt itself to write a specific query and then i pass basically that question that a user has asked then i go to my database and i enter manually the spreadsheet id the sheet id and the specific results from the google i aggregate the whole thing to json and there's like no many um, many differences here so basically i'll take all the data uh, items that we have in the database and I'll pass it back to um, to my, my webhook and for the post request pretty much similar I'll go with the database uh, ID and the name of the sheets and I'll add a row here so whenever we don't find in product ID in our database we're going to add a new product into our database and I'll specify what are the specific items that we want to add and in case we have the id of the product so id is actually exists we're going to search for a specific row in which this id exists and we're going to change a specific value of that row so as you can see here 
we've got the row number specific row number and we will insert a specific value depending which value we actually have we're gonna insert it here and let's actually see how that works in practice so if we go to our chat gpt and we can actually create it Okay, so my ChatGPT was created and let me ask, uh, what are the five cheapest products in your shop, for example, right? It's gonna call a specific database. Okay, and uh, here we encountered an error and the reason for the error is just because we have just deleted the webhooks here and I didn't build a scenario around here. So instead, I have another agent that I have pre-created already with this example, and I'll show you how that technically works. Okay, and let me ask, uh, what are five cheapest products, okay? And what is it? one more important thing? It should be always running. Otherwise, whenever it receives a request, it's gonna run. Otherwise, it will not run. Okay, so here, it finds here the five cheapest products available and it finds 235, 235 after the discount. If we go to our database to check that, um, that was the selling price. And we can actually see, uh, we can find uh, the, the cheapest products. Indeed, there were two products at 235, the next one and 269 and 251. And we can get back here, 240, 251, 269. That's exactly correct. So it's actually retrieved the data uh, correctly. And if we go back and actually see how that works, we can actually access this request and we, we see, okay, so this one got retrieved five cheapest products available. So this chat GPT understood, okay, we need to select everything order by M ascending, and, but ascend it and limit to five. So far, the most cheapest products in column M. And if we go to column M, is this the selling price? it correctly understood was the database structure and was able to generate the correct the query and then we go to the search rows and essentially here it found those five products exactly the, the ones that we've seen we aggregated those products into long long json string and we pass that data to our gpt assistant so this is how the get response work and now we have arrived a new product and, we, and i say add a new product to the database so and i'll go just random prices uh want to see how that technically works so if it is able to access a specific webhook understands it correctly we confirm so it has been added and let me actually check the product database and if we go down below 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 we can find we've got the lovely bracelet that I've added before when I was testing it, and then we got the white t-shirt so it automatically identified the category for it um, there was no rating because there was no data on it, so it uh, came up with zero uh, in that case. It also came up with the show description as well. So this is the URL of the picture, of course, is not working. And we can further go and eliminate so that it um, leaves those fields blank so that it doesn't fill it for you. But here, as you can see, we've got $4.99 and the selling price $3.99. The only difference is that the discount rate is not in percent. It's actually, it's 20% in fact, but it's not 20. So it should be 0.2 in fact. Otherwise, it has correctly added the product and we can also do one last thing. We can select, uh, for example, this product. Uh, the rating is 2.7 and we say, what if we want to update the database and we can say update the rating uh, of this product to 5.0. Uh, let's me specify product ID. Okay. Well, let's see if understands it correctly and if it can update the product for us. Okay, so we're gonna we confirm and it has updated the product. And as we can see here, the rating of this product that we just pre-selected is five. So it automatically works with your database. And as I was showing that in the video, the guy was actually calling nine different databases to retrieve different data. It doesn't use the post or uh, or any other request. It, most of them were like get requests just to get the data. But here I'm just literally showing how you can use this webhook to not only to get the data, but also to post the data to your database. You can update the data, update the database. You can add new rows and new items, or you can retrieve the knowledge from your databases to craft that all knowledge in one and basically create a custom patient story. So to recap, ChatGTP with Actions is not just about answering your questions. It's about empowering you to get things done from automating tasks to integrating tools seamlessly. These features can save you time and transform how you work. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more tips and insights on unlocking the power of AI. I've got plenty more exciting tutorials and ideas coming your way next year, so you won't want to miss them. See you next